Well, are you tired of the sudden attacks by the enemy? Pastor Russell Johnson reveals why the enemy wants to harm you and how you can shake off the snakes to live the destiny God has for you. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, it can happen in an instant. One moment everything seems fine, the next the enemy strikes out at you, poisoning your life to try and destroy you. But you don't have to take his attack. You don't have to take it. It's time to shake off the snakes the enemy has brought against you. With the help of our special guest, you're gonna find out how to do that. First joining me around the table is my lovely daughter in love, Susanna Lamb, how are you? I'm good, how are you? We always wanna hear a good message, right? Always. And we're gonna hear a good one today. Yeah. I love that. April Simons. Shaking it off. Shake it off. <laughs> Shake it off. We can turn I that song it, into yeah. Yeah, something good I'll for let sure. I'll you do that. <laughs> okay, Cindy Johnston. Well, I'm looking forward to this guest. Yeah, because every everyone has to endure attacks from the enemy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happens every yes, day. Yes, it does. Right? I mean, it, as long as we understand we're in a battle yeah. in the world we're living in, right? Good but greater evil. is he that is within yes, me than yes. he that is within yes. the world. That's right. And my beautiful, lovely daughter, Rebecca Lamb Wise. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Are you ready to shake it off? I am. You know, you said another <laughs> line from another song, we're not gonna take it. <laughs> yeah. I was in like the yes, yes. That's good. So. That's good. We, we, we can think of a song yeah. for everything, Cindy <laughs> Murdoch, can't we? We can. And But I was just thinking, the more we shake off yeah. the things of the enemy, the better we get at shaking it off yeah. and we recognize it. So, mm. yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I mean, we don't need to let those kind of things hang on us no. for very long, for no sure. Way. Shake it off. Well, he is a bold, prolific pastor that is challenging today's generation to be ignited by the Bible and God's presence. Please welcome Pastor Russell Johnson. Here he comes. Yeah. Hello there. <laughs> All right. We're ready to shake it off. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Preach, preacher, as Listen, they would say. You know, uh, my producer listened to that message uh, that we're going to talk about today, and she's like, I've never heard him preach before. Huh? And he preaches really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. You do. So, yeah. You're I mean, good. it kind of oh, surprises you. you. I mean, it's just like, because he's, you're, you're almost in person a little shy. Sure. But not when you get up, brother. Well. Not when you get up. Don't <laughs> fire you. To... That's something. Okay, Deliver. well, each and every one of us are called by God to live out his plan and purpose for our lives, but it's important that we understand that the enemy doesn't want that for you. And as God turns up the heat in your life and ministry and you align more and more with his will, the lies and schemes and attacks of the enemy get exposed. Yes. And that's what Pastor Russell is here to unpack for us today. So um, this can happen and really does happen to everyone that's watching today. Yeah, that's the reality. You know, pain is kind of a universal uh, human experience and it's what binds everybody together and everybody has a story of something that they've either walked through or been through or personally experienced or somebody close to them that has experienced that has caused them a measure or a modicum of pain or discomfort, but the reality is, is it's what you do with what you have been through that ultimately defines where you're gonna go. And I think this is the message of Acts 28. This is the message of Paul shaking off the snakes on the island of Malta. You know, your pain is a place of reference, but it doesn't have to be a place of residence. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be where I live. It doesn't have to be where I build my house. The valley of the shadow is what I walk through. Yes. It's not where I dwell in. Yes. Yes. And so for me, helping people have that conversation, because I think oftentimes believers, they think the cross in Christianity exists to eliminate my pain. Mm -hmm. And I think the cross exists to give purpose to your pain. Yeah. Oh, that's and so the worst good. thing that could happen is yes. to go through something painful and not learn the lesson oh, of yes. it that go. can ultimately help you and then transform somebody else around mm. you. That's you know, so I think that's one of the biggest lies of the enemy is to make us think what we've gone through personally that somehow, woe is me, I'm the only one that's felt this way, and yet, um, if we can really focus our eyes back on Jesus mm -hmm. and understand that he's wanted, he wants to bring us through that storm because we're all going to go through storms. But when he brings us through on the other side, 
we are better right. on the other side, even though that doesn't preach well. Right. But it is that refining fire that does something and shapes us and molds us versus a life that is spent uh, really not ever experiencing any real pain. Right, I think sometimes people think about following Jesus like a get out of jail or get out of pain free yeah. card. Yeah. If I just put faith in Christ, everything is easy from this moment forward. And I don't know if my life has gotten any easier since yeah. deciding to follow Jesus. It's gotten a lot more worthwhile. Yes. And following Jesus has helped give me context for where to park my pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my pain belongs at the foot of the cross. And in doing so, I reflect mm -hmm. on his redeeming and atoning value in and through my life. And that helps give me, you know... Uh, a proper theological understanding of, of, of how to walk through this life and be a, a victor of your circumstance instead of a victim to your circumstance. And that's the thin line. Yeah. And I think for us, you know, as we're trying to develop a community in the Northwest, encouraging people to follow Jesus, you know, what we're wanting to communicate to them is the reality of the broken world we live in. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not going to escape difficulty. Right. We can't just hide in a bunker and wait for the return of Christ and never make an impact on the world around us. So if you want to do something, be something, and say something, you're going to get bit by all sorts of circumstances around you, right. including people who are close to you, yeah. yep. including Christians, yep. including people who shouldn't hurt you, but they do. Yes. Amen. And you've got to have a place to park that pain, else it will own you mm -hmm. and eat you alive. That's right. Well, let's go back to... Um, I really just kind of want you to preach this message to yeah. people who are watching, to some of you that you really need to hear this today. And um, people that are watching right now that have been hurt and they're parked there and they can't move out of that place. And there are people watching right now that don't go to church. Right. There are people that don't know Jesus so you can fit him into that equation because obviously that's the most important thing. But take us back to the story of Paul. Remember you shared that. Yeah. You did such a great job. Yeah. Oh, of, I feel I just saw the pictures, yeah. I mean, of them mm -hmm. on the boat and it falling <laughs> apart and all that. So take us back <laughs> to that great story in the Bible. Yeah, it happens in the book of Acts and in chapter 28. And Paul is in prison and he is appealing his conviction to the emperor in Rome. And so there's a boat that picks him up and is sailing to Rome. It's supposed to take three weeks, and it ends up taking three months. Wow. Paul tries to warn them. He says, listen, I've talked to the Lord. This is not a safe time to travel. Y'all need to wait until winter season is over. But the Bible says that the captain of the boat, the expert, he said, no, we're, we're going to leave right now. And it ended up in disaster. They end up shipwrecked on the island of Malta. And uh, in doing so, uh, Paul finds himself on the beach collecting wood, building a fire, trying to get warm. It's been 14 days. Nobody's eaten any food. They're scared to death, just lucky to be alive. And right in the middle of Paul doing his good deeds and his good works, building a fire, yeah. taking care of the other prisoners, that's when the viper jumps out of the wood and attaches himself to Paul's hand. And the people think Paul's cursed. See, this is why he's getting bit. Yeah. This is why you're going through what you're going mm, through. It's similar familiar. to what Job's wife told Job yeah. when all of a sudden his possessions you know, it's go away. It's similar to what Job's friends yeah. said to him. Just go yeah. read. Well, I'm reading yeah. that right now, and it blows my mind. They said, curse they God him. and die. Yeah, yeah. They said, it's this. It's, it's the punishment of God. It's, it's, the, it's God is very upset at you, Job, and he's trying to get even with you. And uh, Paul shakes it off. And the Bible says that you know, the islanders, they watch Paul, and they are waiting for him to drop dead. You know, which is to me similar to people in your yes. sphere of influence so who are true. waiting to watch your reaction yeah. to when you get bit. Because maybe the greatest testimony you'll ever have as a believer is what you do in the face of pain, resistance, yeah. tribulation, yes. persecution. Yes. Because we all go through it. Maybe right. the greatest testimony that we have is that we were overcomers. We kept our peace. We kept our joy. We kept our focus. A lot of other people would have given up, but we kept going. Yeah. And Paul shakes that thing off. They're all waiting for him to die. Not only does he die, but he keeps building the fire, and then they think he's a god. Not only does he not die. <laughs> now they want to worship him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. And so Paul turns it into a gospel opportunity and ends up praying for some of the governmental so officials beautiful. on the island, and they get healed, and lives are transformed and changed because a person refused to allow yes. the bite of the viper to also Ooh. inject poison Ooh, into, their, so into their bloodstream. So for me, you can't avoid getting bit. Yeah. But getting poison's a choice. Yeah. yeah. Because when you get bit by a viper, actually what happens is that poison, it'll paralyze your body. Yeah. 
Mm. And unhealed pain paralyzes your body. It yeah. paralyzes yes. your spirituality. You're no longer able to move forward because it becomes the greatest gravitational force in your life. You revolve around it. Pain actually becomes the thing that you worship, mm. the filter by which mm. you view everything else. And so the goal of finding hope in God is not that you will never experience pain. It's that when you do, you can properly process it so that ultimately your pain doesn't become a casket. It becomes a trampoline mm. into a bright and a better future. Oh, yes. I love so that. Good. I love so that. Would good. you just take a moment, uh, Russell, if you would, and uh, talk to people who are right there in the middle of pain right now and they don't really know the Lord or even necessarily understand everything we're talking about right now yeah absolutely. Just, just kind of introduce them to what is the most important part of this whole show today yeah you know uh, for me uh there is uh, hope that is found in the name of jesus christ the reason why paul is in prison in the first place in acts 28 the bible says because he refuses to stop preaching the resurrection of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that if Christ was not resurrected, if he was not raised from the dead, there is no hope and our preaching is in vain. But if it is true that Jesus, in fact, has been raised from the dead, then it calls every man, woman, child into an account to choose this day whom you will serve. And I think for me, my heart as a pastor uh, and a leader in the Pacific Northwest is that we want to introduce people, not by obligation, but by invitation yeah. to the hope that Christ offers, because it's only the hope that he offers beyond the grave that gives us the ability to not only have hope for today, but courage for tomorrow. And I think in our culture today, so many folks are operating with a deficit of courage. Hopelessness has never ranked higher off the charts than it does today. People have come out of COVID. The economy's messed up. They've had loved ones pass away. Relationships fall apart. If people are really dealing today with an existential crisis of hopelessness. And I just believe that the message of Jesus Christ provides for yes. us hope, yes. not from within, but hope from mm -hmm. above. That if you will yes. accept it and receive it, it will do a transformative work in your life to such a degree that not if you get hurt, but when you get hurt, yes. you have a Jesus who is familiar with your suffering, who is familiar with your pain, and who more importantly, by his stripes, you can receive wholeness and healing in your life. And that is the hope of Jesus, the one who was crucified three days later, raised from the dead, 40 days after that, ascended into heaven and coming soon. And that's the God that we serve. Mm. Would you just lead us in a prayer? We'll repeat after you and give people an opportunity that maybe don't know how to pray that prayer. It's really simple. I mean, I've heard people just say, God, if you're there, I need you. I mean, he's, he's opened your heart for, for such a time as this. Like you have been looking for something and you don't even know what it is. And yet you stopped and you're watching and God is knocking on your heart's door today. Russell? Yeah, let's do it. Father, we come to you today and we ask that you would put fresh peace, hope, and joy in our hearts. Mm -hmm. God, we admit in our own ways and in our own attempts to fix our lives or to be made righteous that we've made mistake after mistake, but today we are choosing to turn from our old ways and instead trust you with a new way and with a new plan. God, we ask that you would fill us today with your spirit, you would forgive us of our wrongdoing. You would empower us to operate with a renewed mind and a transformed spirit filled with peace, hope, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And God, today we invite you to be everything that scripture says you are so that we can be everything that you know us to be. Yes. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just that simple to pray that prayer. Yes. And um, if you did that, I know we're doing it kind of in the middle of the show, but um, that's just because the Lord loved us and loves you enough to stop me to give you that opportunity. So we'd love uh, for you to call that number, love to send you a free book. We don't have to get your name, address or anything, but it's just important, I think, to tell someone, to share with someone. You know, April, you were sharing uh, yesterday on the program that um, there was a time in your dad's life, mm -hmm. John Osteen, mm -hmm. he lost hope. Yeah. There was a call of God on his life. Mm -hmm. And there was purpose. Right. And um, some things happened. Maybe share about that because there's someone watching right now that you feel that way. You feel like you don't know kind of what's gone on 
in my life and you feel like you got a snake holding on a viper. You feel like there's poison in your system and you don't know how to get past it and the enemy has lied to you about your purpose and God's plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know that it's never too late. Yeah. It's never too right. late. And the Bible talks about the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And that call that God has on your life to do whatever it is, that dream that you have has been lost, but God wants to revive mm. that today. Yeah, so, you know, my dad was in the ministry and he went through a very unfortunate event. He went through a divorce that he didn't want. And, uh, you know, even though the church still allowed him to be, this is long before Lakewood, um, the pastor, he felt like he failed God. And he felt disqualified and he took himself out of the ministry. Hmm. Started in a business that was successful, but he couldn't shake the call of God on his life. And he began to read the Bible. You can shake the snake <laughs> off, but you can't shake the call and of the God. Call. That's yeah. a message for you right there. Okay. That's it. So he read in the scripture like he had read so many times and saw how Jesus used imperfect people. And it dawned on him one day, if God uses imperfect people, he can use me. Mm -hmm. So he dusted himself off, got back up, got back in the ministry and found my mom years later. They married, started Lakewood. And what it just says to me, the enemy is after our families. Yes. The enemy is after our calling. Satan's greatest fear is our tomorrow. He yeah. doesn't want us yeah. to step into the calling. He doesn't want us to step into our destiny. And I'm so glad, Joni, that my dad made the decision that the enemy wasn't gonna take him out. Yes. And he set up a generational legacy, and that's what we have to think about sometimes, our legacy, the decisions we make today impact yes. and affect our bloodline. Yes. Yes. And we just, gotta, we just gotta go for it, shake it off, um, embrace what God has called you to do. It doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made, God still has his perfect plan for your life. Mm -hmm. Russell? So good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is the uh, essentially the nexus of, of what we're communicating uh, about today. Uh, the greatest argument against death is an unfinished assignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I look out on a crowd of people as I'm communicating, I just see hundreds of unfinished assignments, people with the calling and the gifting of God that dwells within them, Richly, as you mentioned, Joni, it is without repentance. They can't shake it. They can't run from it. It's like a shadow. It haunts them in the middle of the night. You're called for such a time as this. And uh, for me, yeah, so many folks are one critique away from failure or one hope encouragement away from success. Mm -hmm. And if we can be beacons of hope yes. in the midst of people's pain, hey, I know it looks like you shipwrecked your life. Yeah. I know it looks like that abuse that divorce, that abandonment is going to be the thing that forever identifies you. But here's what God says. Here's what God knows to be true, causing people to shift their gaze and shift their focus. When somebody gets a revelation of what God says, yes. who he is, right. and what he declares them to be, it is changes everything about them. Paul's on his way not to vacation, right. not to Hawaii, not to speak at a conference. He's on his way to defend himself in front of Nero, and it goes from bad to worse. And yet, what the enemy intends for evil, God uses for good, yeah. because the island of Malta is forever impacted by the gospel, because Ooh. one man named Paul yes. refused to allow pain to be the thing that identified I him. I love that. And you... Um, you know, in hearing your story early on, share a moment or two when it was dark and it was hard to shake off the lie of the enemy for your purpose, for your identity. I mean, here you are now, God has blessed you and I mean, you're doing incredible things. The church has taken off. But it didn't start like that. No, it didn't. You know, we had humble beginnings. We planted the church in a barn. Our first service, we sat on hay bales because we couldn't afford chairs. We had rats and mice and owls flying in and out of the building. And I thought to myself, God, what did we do? And, uh, you know, in those early days, I was bivocational. I worked in pest control. I worked under people's houses. We took care of cockroaches and rats and all sorts of things. All of the women at the table said this is the worst job. That's my nightmare. And that's why I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow because I never want to go back to that, ever. I can never go back. So, you know, it was early on in the church. And, y you know, when you plant a church, you're everything. You're the preacher. You're the custodian. Mm -hmm. You're yes. the youth pastor. You're the kids pastor. You're everything. You're the, so fine, you're the financer. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the CFO and the chief giver to the church. Yeah. You know, you're counting yeah. your own offering. So yeah. it's a... Uh, uh, but uh, Marie and I uh, found out that uh, we were uh, expecting and, and really excited and we're serving God and, and the church is barely just starting to grow and finally turning the quarter. And, you know, uh, about three months in, she, she came to me and she said, something's wrong. I know something's wrong. 
And so ended up uh, at the hospital and they said, well, you're having an ectopic pregnancy. And so that led to a season of surgeries and chemotherapy and just uh, hospital visit after hospital visit, tens of thousands of dollars in bills. We are barely making it financially and now we've got a mountain of debt. And uh, we just thought, what are we doing wrong? God, what more do you want? Yeah. What, what mistake did we make? Yeah. Uh, and so that season passed and we got pregnant again and went back to the uh, hospital and they said, you're having another ectopic pregnancy back under the surgery. And oh uh, finally the doctors, after they did surgery, they said, you will never have uh, children biologically. They, they, oh you, you will never do it. It's, it's, there's been too much pain and too much trauma. And uh, for us, that was a really like kind of soul crushing moment of sure. thinking like, what have we done to anger God? Have, have we gotten on the wrong side of this thing? Is there something off in our own lives? And it just reminded me of how the enemy so often tries to hijack your pain yes. to create distance between you and God. Yes. And to make it, instead of we live in a fallen world and, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Right. And this is part of what it looks like to live in a world that's been impacted by the curse of sin. You start asking interior questions. Is there something wrong with me? Am I broken? Is right. God upset at me? Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord really used it as a time of interior development for us because really I'm convinced that the church didn't start growing until Maria and I started growing. Mm -hmm. That we had to have wow. some interior spiritual growth yes. through the valley of weeping, yes. through the valley of pain. Yes. And then God blessed us. And we've had three miracle children since then. Wow. All glory, praise to God. Total surprise to the doctors and to us. Looking back on that, it was some of the most painful things that we had walked through as a married couple, but some of the most necessary because pain is the cauldron of development. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the threshold of your pain is the threshold of your growth. Mm -hmm. And as soon as people say, you know what? No, nah, I'd rather just retire and be on a golf course and not engage with the world around me anymore. All of a sudden, that's where their cap is. Yeah. And so for me, I go, hey, if walking through things that we don't understand mm -hmm. is the price of following Jesus and the cost of revival, then yeah. sign me up up yeah. because I refuse to build an altar to my existential why. Why me? Why this? Why now? Why did it happen? Why not him? Why, the, you know, and people get stuck there. Yes. Yeah. So for me, it's my conviction. When I don't understand, I choose Jesus. Yes. When I don't understand, yes. I choose the way of following yes. Jesus. Yes. And yes. so uh, we're committed to doing that, but that'd just be a small example. That's wow. a great story. That's and it's so true especially for those of you that have a call of God on your life, mm -hmm. um, you have to understand, I mean, some of the early days that Marcus and I went through were very painful. Mm. We started with nothing. Right. I would balance a checkbook and we'd have $22.12. And he would say, okay, you know exactly what we can and cannot spend. But God was faithful. Mm -hmm. But there was not an abundance. There was not a blessing. People see now, you know, and everyone enjoys the blessing now, but they didn't walk those many, many years that we walked right. uh, where there were lawsuits, there were people that stabbed us in the back, there, there were lies, there was manipulation, there was all kinds mm. of trouble and yeah. snakes that we had right. to shake off. <laughs> right. But God was faithful and he will be faithful to you as well. I see Rebecca has a verse on her phone. <laughs> oh. That probably means she has something she wants I to was, share. I was, I'm looking at you like, tap me in, coach. Um, <laughs> no, this just resonates with me so deeply. And I think about this verse where Paul says, that I may know Christ and the yes. power of his resurrection yes. and, and the fellowship yeah. of his sufferings, becoming yeah. like him right. in his death. We leave that and the fellowship yeah. of yeah. his yeah. suffering. Yeah, we leave that yeah. part out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's even a verse that says, Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Yeah. Yes. And so if I could go back and talk to myself when I was going through difficult seasons through the years, I wish I could coach myself and say, stop trying to understand why, because yeah. I honestly think for some things you might never understand why. Yeah, but true. be encouraged that when trials come, God's doing something in yeah. you, and there's a purpose to it, and you are going to come through mm -hmm. it, and you can have peace in the midst of it, and not allow myself to be so flustered and so caught up in the why, because when, the, when painful things happen, the enemy tries to hurt our hearts yeah. so that we become hardened, and then we become discouraged, yeah. and then we mm -hmm. give up. Right. And the worst, the only way you can really stop, be stopped in your calling is if you yourself decide to give up. Because if God is for True. you, who can be against yes. you? Yes. So this is such an important message because I think we allow ourselves to be so, especially in America, so confused by trials and pain mm -hmm. that 
we're not understanding that God is doing something if we'll just right. submit to him in the process yeah. and allow him to do the work within us and see the fruit that comes mm -hmm. from the storms. Mm -hmm. And you know, honestly, people that I've interviewed over the last, I have been doing this for 37 years, interviewing people. And one of the things that stands out to me is some of those peoples that have the, some of those peoples, some of those people <laughs> that have the most dramatic testimonies that have endured the greatest loss mm -hmm. and the greatest pain mm -hmm. are some of the people that God has used right. so most true. powerfully. Right. Yes. I don't know if you heard people say before, I don't want to follow anybody who doesn't have a limb. Yes. But there is something to that. And like right. what you're saying, it is a part of who we are. You're going to, you've dealt with pain. But what we're here to tell you today is that you don't have to deal with it by yourself. Right. Right. And the key, the difference to us and people who don't know Jesus is that he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you to the end of the world. He's going to carry us through. Yes. We're not going to stay there. Right. Right. How important is that to know we're not going to stay there? Right. And, the, you know, in, in community, there is hope and there is healing and there is purpose. And so many people choose to live life alone when scripture says God has not forsaken us. In fact, he's given us the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, yeah. Father. We have an advocate on our behalf. Jesus makes intercession for us day and night. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've been filled with the hope of glory. Uh, God has numbered the days of our life and ordered our footsteps. And so, you know, for me, even when I don't know what tomorrow holds, I've met the one who holds my yes. tomorrow. Yes. Yes. That gives me a great peace and a great resilience in the face of yes. conflict, pain, disease, dysfunction, death, knowing that nothing can take me out until it's my God-ordained time to go. Right. Yes. So I'm going to put my life in his hands yes. because God can do more with my life in his hands than I can with my life in my hands. So good. So good. And so, you know, for me, it's like some people want a resurrection, but they never want a crucifixion. Yeah. Yep. And to me, if you want to mm -hmm. enjoy and experience the power of his resurrection, then you also endure through the dark night of the soul, through those yeah. suffering moments, knowing something bigger, brighter, and better is coming my way. So good. Well, we are out of time. What a great, mm -hmm. great message for you to hear today that whatever storms or snakes you've had to deal with, I want you to know God has a bigger destiny for you. He wants to expose and drive out all the schemes of the enemy mm -hmm. that, of course, that he's used to keep you from the life God has for you. And that's the thing you have to understand is that God has continued purpose for you. You have to hear that. Don't give up now. Mm -hmm. You're about to see the sun come up and shine on that darkness that has tried to surround you. So choose today to shake off those snakes and trust in the life-changing power of Jesus. Again, if you're watching today and you have some things in your life that you need to shake off, that's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We have prayer partners that are standing by. We'd love to pray with you. We don't have to get your name or information. We're not gonna ask anything from you. We wanna be a blessing to you. That's why Daystar exists. I do wanna thank Pastor Russell for joining us. He's one of the up and coming ones I got my eye on. And God's <laughs> using, really proud of him for more in his ministry and other resources. You can visit him online at the Pursuit nw.com. He does have a, a church in Washington State. It's located in Snohomish and Seattle. Okay, yeah. so people, can, everybody welcome. Yes, ma'am. Everybody welcome. Lot, if you want a Holy Ghost, revival, healing, delivering, set free kind of church, yes, that's where you want to go. And great preaching as well. Well, let us know how today's talk has touched your life. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. I want to thank you so much for watching. Those of you that prayed that prayer, invited Jesus into your heart and life, hey, I'm most excited about that. I'd love for you to call. We'd love to send you a free book again, uh, Now What? And uh, just know that it was no accident that you watched the show today. God has his hand on you. He loves you so very much, and we do too. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.